Welcome to the Marvel Snap Meta Report, a new series where I cover the best, top tier, most elite, sweaty decks in Marvel Snap for the current season. So I will be tracking these decks as they rise, as they fall, all throughout the weeks, all while talking to the best players across Snap. There are plenty of competitive decks in Snap. That's the best part about the game. Hell, I'm sure you've got some top secret deck that you've climbed to infinite with easily. Uh, however, today we're going to focus on the most consistent decks used by the best of the best. Now listen, the top five decks that I have for you today are going to be in no specific order. Uh, they're all top tier options and they can all win you pretty consistent cubes. Once we get a more established competitive scene in Snap with tournaments and something that I'm personally excited for and working towards, it'll be a lot easier to evaluate what the best of the best are using. But for now, here is our list. First up today, we've got the Patriot deck, a very entertaining deck that continues to perform at an elite level. Now, as far as the deck is concerned, this is going to be most likely the deck you will want to run with a couple of alternates. Looking at the flexible options, you guys can see you can go with Cyclops for a bit more power, Debris for Disruption that's going to help you with the rocks on your side, uh, and also we got Armor or Cosmo. Now, Cosmo is great to protect your Patriot from the likes of Enchantress, and then Armor can protect your One Drops as well. But the main part of this deck is to use that bottom row to power up the top row. Patriot followed up by Mystique is a obviously huge power play. Uh, Kazar and Blue Marvel also give you some options if you don't pull the right cards. And then, of course, Ultron to fill the board. Now, you can run America Chavez or Onslaught for the last card choice. America to give yourself a bit better of a rate to pull Patriot or, you know, Onslaught if you really want to just go crazy with the power. Uh, the deck has a lot of pros. It's got some cons, but let's break them down. The pros of the deck are obviously it's going to make useless cards a lot better and you're going to have your hands on most of these from pool one and two. Uh, it's pretty consistent amongst bad locations. Like if you get something like Death Domain, Ultron, and Squirrel Girl, they're going to definitely help you out. Uh, in Central Park and Savage Land, uh, you're only going to get bonuses from those locations. And lastly, it's pretty damn easy to play. There's not a lot of complexity in Patriot decks. And so it's one of those decks, if you get your hands on the right cards, you're in for a good time. However, let's look at the cons of the deck as well. Uh, you are going to need Mystique and Ultron for the top tier level of play. Uh, it can be good without it, but those two cards really take it to the next level. Uh, and then obviously, a, a big one is that your opponent's are going to know what you're playing. It's pretty obvious when you see a Misty Knight uh, because no one else is going to be running that card that you're going up against a Patriot deck. Next up, we have a bit more of a sleeper pick. We've got the Two Devils deck. Now, this deck is focused around the dinosaur that you've been using since Pool 1. And yes, the good news is he's still elite at top level play as long as you have the right complementing cards. It's all going to be about controlling the board, but also having high level play to efficiently shut down your opponent and counter them at the same time. Let's break it down. The two devils deck is going to be focused on feeding your devil dinosaur, the strategy you already know, while giving you plenty of control options as well. We have Nightcrawler or Agent 13, depending on which side you want to lean towards. You can go ahead and feed Angela more with Nightcrawler, whereas Agent 13 will be great for more cards in hand. Now, Daredevil is going to be absolutely essential to this deck as well as Leader. Daredevil is going to allow you to maximize your plays at the end game with either Professor X and shutting down a lane early and laying down Devil Dinosaur to win the other. Or you could go ahead and read and counter the opponent with Arrow or Gamora for maximum value. We have Scarlet Witch to go ahead and help us as a tech card, Sentinel, and Cosmo to counter those destroyed decks and any other counters that you might see like rogue and enchantress moon girl obviously we know why she's here is to help out devil dinosaur and leader works as a perfect option uh, because once you're set up you've controlled the game you have high power cards leader's just going to match whatever the opponent can do this deck is mainly going to be focused on these three pool three cards that i say that you pretty much have to have Let's look at the pros and cons for this deck. Now, first of all, it's highly consistent, and that's going to be great as you have multiple win conditions. Uh, you have a counter to the counters. <laughs> uh, Professor X is going to counter some of the other top tier decks on this list, uh, and you just have ways to deal with anything that is thrown at you. Uh, and then lastly, guys, it's, it's very easy to learn. It's pretty straight up for the most part, and you guys have been playing these cards for a long time now. And the cons... Uh, really not a lot of them. Of course, you can be countered by Enchantress, but we've got cards to settle that. 
mainly the biggest count here is you have to have leader you have to have daredevil to make this work the best it's to no surprise that Wong, one of the better cards in Marvel Snap, is the central focus of our next on-reveal top-tier deck, the Wong Storm. This deck is focused on both control and abusing the ridiculous power that on-reveal provides. Uh, the core strategy is that you'll be spreading your cards on the shutdown lanes, and at the same time, you'll be trying to play Wong on four, sometimes three with Psylocke. And then you're always going to do the same exact recipe. You're going to be playing a five-cost option, followed by a six cost option looking at the core central of the deck we have ebony ma a bit more rare of a card but he's got high power and the con of not being able to play cards is not a big deal as we can easily move cards to his location we have iceman for some great disruption psylocke to get the early wong play uh, she's actually quite imperative to this deck also, we've got Ironheart to go ahead and get some nice combos with later on. Now, in the top right spot, we have a choose option. You can go ahead and go with Mr. Negative, as a lot of the cards we have, like Arnim Zola and Wong and even Black Panther, can all work very well with him. Uh, but more reliably, I would probably go with Juggernaut. He's a great follow-up to Storm if you don't pull Wong, or Wolfsbane to follow up on a nice combo. On the bottom row, we've got the big finishers. You're going to be obviously playing Wong on three or four. And again, your main focus is playing Black Panther, followed up by Arnim Zola, White Tiger, followed up by Odin, or you can do a Doctor Doom slash Leader mix for that last card option. Uh, both of those are great. Doctor Doom is a catch-all to spread yourself across the lanes, whereas the Leader can counter the enemy if you're ahead by turn 5. The pros for this deck are fairly obvious. I mean, it's on reveal, so you have tons of different options to plug and play uh, if you don't have any of the specific cards that I mentioned above. At the same time, it's a lot of high power and a lot of combo potential, which makes it super easy to run. Uh, but as far as the cons go, there are going to be some difficulties, as I think Wong has a big sign on his head that says, I'm going to be playing my next cards here. Uh, Psylocke is somewhat imperative to the deck, and so that could be uh, a bit hard for those that don't have her. And then lastly, for the cons, you usually need, uh, you know, some right card combos to go your way. Uh, but the reason this deck is here is because often you're going to have so many different win conditions and combos that you can just make with the deck, and that's why it's so consistent. Next up, we have the MVDs of MVDs. That's right, I just made up a word for it. We have Sarah Miracle. Regarded by a lot as the best deck in Marvel Snap, the most notable thing of Sarah decks and Sarah Miracle decks are the flexible options that you have. Now, the two decks I'm going to be showing you here are the most ran Sarah Miracle decks, one focus on combos, and the other one focus on a discard synergy. Now, lucky for you, I spent 15 hours on the most complex deck guide I have ever put out. Uh, we have turn-by-turn -turn strategy, the best combos, and literally everything you'd want to know about it. So we're going to move to the next deck. Uh, but if you want to check that out now, you can go ahead and click up above. Uh, or if you want to check it out later, I will put it in the description. Let's get to our last deck. Believe the hype. The Bayro Destroy deck is the real freaking deal. In fact, even in my own testing, I went up 30 ranks, only losing a handful of games with this deck, as the biggest pro of this deck is the ability to counter so many of the decks that we've talked about today and most of the highly competitive decks out there. Utilizing both powerful combos and strategic late game play, this all adds to an already dominating powerful archetype in Marvel Snap, Destroy. Now taking a look at the Bayro Destroy deck, this is the most common version of the deck that is ran. We've got three one cost cards that one of them stand out definitely, and that is going to be Yondu. Now he is there because the main focus of the early turns in this deck is to destroy at least two cards to set up a phenomenal late game combo. Now obviously, just like Sarah Miracle, you'll be using Bucky Barnes and Carnage and Mysterio as fodder. We have Killmonger for the big payoff with Nova, but the huge strategy of this deck is to set everything up for turns 5 and 6. Now in turn 5, you're actually going to want to play Wave, and this is, this is going to counter pretty much all the other decks out there. This forces your opponent to really only play one card on turn 6. Now because you've destroyed other cards, you're going to be able to play, obviously, 
arrow, which is going to be a prime center focus of disrupting what that opponent even wants to do. Uh, but your death is also going to be able to be played as well because of the cost reduction on the card. And that is the central core strategy of this deck and what makes it so great. You get to play multiple cards and control the enemy on the last turn of the game, which results in a ton of cubes. Now looking at the pros and the few cons of this deck, the pros are going to be that you counter most of the meta decks out there. You're going to be giving your opponent false confidence as the win conditions always typically come on turn 5 and 6. And then also it's pretty easy to understand in comparison to something like the Sarah Miracle. Now looking at the cons, we don't have a lot, uh, but mainly arrow, wave, and death are all essential. You can't replace them, that is the core strategy. Uh, and also it can be countered by some tech cards some of the time. Uh, but again, guys, I encourage you, if you have the cards, try this deck out. It's freaking ridiculous, and it'll definitely get its own guy made at some point. Uh, but that's where you guys come in. Let me know out of all the decks that we did talk about today, the ones you see right here, which one of these do you want me to make a deck guide on? I will definitely take the comments to heart. Uh, as again, you guys are the voice of this community. And that is going to do it for the first ever Meta Marvel Snap Report. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. These are the top five decks for the month of November. If this video helped you out and you found it interesting and you like the graphics, let me know by liking today's video. And also guys, over 80%, 80% man, have not subscribed yet to the channel. And I get it, but it helps me out a ton as a creator. So if you have not, uh, yeah, that'd be pretty awesome. All right, guys, have a good one. And until next time, happy snapping.